There is a load of things with the Assassin's Creed Shadows that we got to talk about. Ubisoft bringing out this new game and telling the story of Yaksky. I There's many different translations for the name. And how this is apparently the first black samurai. Now, there's a lot of uh, contention and discourse along the lines of what is going on here. And I've read a lot in the last few hours here trying to get caught up on what the story they might be portraying and it's nowhere close to what ubisoft is trying to push out there now there's a lot of contention i mean a lot a lot of people are are going at it saying this guy was real well the, that's not the point here the yaksky was a person in history it's just where that history has really gone who he was, what he was, is he actually a samurai or was this something more of a missionary that had a slave that handed him over to a feudal lord in Japan? And it's kind of a bit of both from what I'm reading. Now, before we get fully into the video, do me a favor or do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel. And by no means do I want to defend Ubisoft's uh, blatant attempt at distracting us from their cash grab of this game being $130. Assassin's Creed Shadows is an absolute travesty to the AAA games market or to just video games in particular, mostly due to that price point. Now, Yaksky, the first African samurai. There is many, many articles that have been written about this since about 2016 going forward. Many people are writing about this, and there's been many different depictions of this telling in comics, manga, and movies as well. The story of Yaksky, the first black samurai in the late 1500s, Jetsuits priest enslaved a towering young man from somewhere in Central or Western Africa. And they, uh, uh, from what I read, uh, they believe it was from Membu Zabe. During a missionary trip to Japan in 1579, the slave was brought upon under service by the Italian missionary Alessandro Velanago. His dark skin would cause quite a stir as the local people would become quite fascinated at the sight of him. In fact, he became so talked about that Oda knew Bonaga, the unifier and ruler of Japan, demanded his presence so that he might see a giant black man for himself. This is actually kind of untrue. Uh, what had happened here is in 1581, there was a demand that the the jet suits uh, meet with the feudal lords, possibly for a trade of a warship or a Portuguese ship. Uh, this is kind of what I'm getting from, from the many, many, many different things that I've read. And upon that meeting, uh, Nubunaga uh, took Yaksky or he was gifted Yaksky, and they had pinned him down and stripped his clothes and tried to wash his skin clean from the color of his skin, not knowing that it was an actual permanent color of a person's skin with the melatonin changing the, uh, the, the people of Africa to look <laughs> that way. Uh, upon realizing that the skin was not painted on, he took great interest in him. According to Lord Nobuganu's art chronicle, it was said that Nobunaga praised Yasuki's strength, claiming he had the strength of 10 men, even uh, had his nephew give him some money as a gift. Now, uh, the money as a gift, this is where you don't really know what's going on at this point. Um, it was it's believed from stuff that I'm reading here that Yaksky was given to Nubugana as a method of gifting a slave just to make trade relations uh, possibly for later military trades of ships or something like that. We're not, from everything I'm seeing, it's very, very convoluted in that sense. Anyway. A year later, Nubuganaga was killed. Uh, he offed himself uh, performing seppuku 
uh, under the hands of other leaders taking taking control of the area in essentially freeing Yaksky from his slave duties as a retainer to Nobunaga. And it's at this point, everything just kind of gets washed. Nobody really knows the history at that point. Um, I've read some articles where they've, you know, they've talked about everything that was going on at this time uh, in the history of Yaksky being uh, under the service of the feudal lord. There, it's also at this time that the term samurai kind of lost all meaning. It no longer became that of a honorable, loyal warrior, and it more became the idea that anyone that took up arms, was part of the military, was a warrior status uh, or retainer, became under, under circumstance to be known as a samurai. By 1586, it came to law, those that uh, carried swords were only military known as samurai. So this was a few years after that. And because he was only in service to Nobunaga for about a year, the stipend that people talk about, this probably would have been the Japanese way or the, the, the history way of just saying, listen, here's your room, your board, everything like that. Um, the idea of slaves, it, it's very convoluted at this point, and uh, it was from missionaries, it was from Portuguese, the, everyone moving around in the world at the time of the year. Throughout the history, uh, we know that things do get skewed, myths, legends are born, and from a single idea becomes a point of reference for something that is being story told. Uh, down the line. And that's where Ubisoft, I believe, is trying to go with uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows. Now, all of that aside, we know the type of thing that's going on in today's world where this type of story would resonate higher in the ranks of trying to be woke and trying to be more of that ideology and the narrative design and pushing it forward. And at the same time, we have people like Kim Belair of Sweet Baby Inc. who had worked on Assassin's Creed Valhalla that possibly along the side worked with uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows. Not saying Kim Belair actually worked on it, but it, the similarities are very similar to that because we have another, uh, another narrative designer that seems to be infatuated with uh, boys and Christianity. It, it, it's some weird stuff in that sense that I really don't want to get into. Um, but it, it brings up the point that this is a very heavily uh, DEI uh, game. The the game is going to push this narrative going forward using Yaksky as the uh, the protagonist, as the person to drive that diversity forward. And it's a very interesting story. Uh, I think his story could be very interestingly told in that sense, and I think this is more of a twist. But the problem that we have with Assassin's Creed is they, they've been known in the past to take historical accuracy and put it into their games where this one in particular does not seem to be that way and it seems to be more narrative driven and that's what's going on with assassin's creed shadows and in in, in some points it looks like they're doing this to distract from the cost from the high price point that they're trying to make for the game. Now, during all of this, I have come across a few articles also saying they're debunking the pseudo historical myths about Black Samurai. Uh, Yaksky is a interesting historical favor, but a samurai he was not. And this is something that's resonated across many different titles right now, across many different articles. We're seeing where people saying he wasn't a samurai more that he was retainer or in this case probably a slave to the feudal lord system that was going on here and over that time the landscape of the world's history the narratives of individuals from diverse backgrounds have often been obscured and romanticized to fit contemporary ideologies the story of yatsi a man from african origin who found his way to japan during the sengoku period serves as a compelling case study of this phenomenon. Yasuki's historical journey from 
possibly being a slave to becoming a retainer in the household of Odai Nobagana, one of Japan's most influential dynamos, is a narrative ripe for exploration and reinterpretation. So that's where we are. Like, is the game going to be woke? Is the game going to put in narrative design that actually does not fit with anyone's values? Is it going to retell a story that's absolutely not true? Quite possibly. Um, is Ubisoft going to grift gamers out of $130 with a day one DLC and by going this controversial route, of Yatsuki's story, instead of actually telling a story of the feudal lord's system in Japan during that time, well, why would they bother going to this point? This is one of those cases where narrative design is trying to reflect history and trying to push the message more than the actual design of the game. All the other games for Assassin's Creed, you generally play someone that is of that time, of that age, of that situation. And there, I've also got conflicting reports that uh, Yatsuki here would be about 16 years old at the time that he was the retainer. So there's a little bit more behind that and for the nuance of it all. Do I think the story is going to be bad? Huh? Well, that, that that's yet to be seen. Uh, we know the game is overly priced. They have day one DLC. Uh, they're trying to push people into the subscription-based model, which seems to be failing a lot of companies right now because that subscription-based mo model goes into saturation instead of a fall-off of video games where they make their money and then it moves on. I don't see this game doing very well. It's probably going to be a glitchy mess. It's uh, it's going to be a day one absolute disaster when the game finally comes out. And we're already seeing the many articles from game journalists completely praising the idea of this because it fits the narrative design of the modern era. I Honestly, the, the story would be interesting and it would be one that I would be interested in diving down if it was not done by Ubisoft for a greedy corporation trying to use the namesake of this slave at this point. Um, I'm hoping it's a situation where he did break his chains, was able to be freed, and because that's what it does look like in the story. But I'm not, I, I'm not hopeful from Ubisoft. I'm not hopeful on that situation. And this is a game I'm just going to sit back and watch. Uh, a lot of the Assassin's Creed games, they've just fallen off. Uh, so it'll be an interesting place where this game really does go. It could be good. It could be bad. But under the control of Ubisoft, it's going to be uh, very questionable. Anyway, I'm your Procadian Phoenix Center Shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>